Paris. And I will uh, present you today um, the, quickly the cave plant of us and how uh, we can try to understand the colonization of this mineral by, uh, by them through uh, the phylogenetic tool. So first, a bit of history. The first insect in cave was described in 1832, it's uh, a little, but for the plant of us, uh, all begins in 1907 with Emil Arnbitza, which uh, did explore many caves in Europe, and he mentioned once a population of six years like insects living in a cave in the Balearic Islands in Spain. Unfortunately, uh, no specimen were kept in collection, so it was really hard to uh, prove it's still there. And we had to wait uh, 45 years to have finally the first uh, true subterranean species described by uh, China and Fena in 1952. It's a uh, really astonishing uh, hypoclodenid, which is known to live in the soil in Tanzania. And we had to uh, uh, end in three. Uh, but the first uh, true cave species was described only one year later by uh, Sinav in 1953. It's uh, succeed from a cave in a, uh, the narrow uh, limestone uh, network of Madagascar called the uh, Florissa Namokensis. After that, uh, Fena described here and there some species mostly in Mexico and Caribbean Island, but it's mostly from the 70s where, uh, with the work of uh, Francis Howard on Hawaii and then Andrew Howard who did a lot of work everywhere in the world on the cave dwellings from the birth that we got more and more insight of on the taxonomy, the uh, systematic, and of course ecology and biology. Uh, this is a story that is in, uh, still in progress. Uh, we had like uh, some uh, there's a new species just described uh, beginning of the year from Hawaii, from a uh, okay. cave, and also there is a team in Brazil who is working a lot about the cave system in uh, in the country, and of course we also. Uh, continue to explain a lot of uh, stuff to more. try to have a better understanding of the cave building. Uh, at the same time, it was important to define what is a subterranean habitat. So, of course, it, it's built, it's categorized in opposition of the surface uh, ecosystem that we call uh, epigean. You have two uh, big categories. The one that is uh, closed and uh, to access to, uh, which is mostly the soil, the crise, the MMS, and the street that we call endogen. And we have the more open one that we love to explore with the caves, the hypogean uh, ecosystem. Uh, this is uh, something that we can find in a really uh, high diversity of middle and substrate. We have uh, in form, we have uh, on the right you can see the lava tubes. Uh, in the middle, the granitic chaos that can have underneath some um, dark environment when you can find some uh, light. And on the right side, you have the limestone cave, which is the most karstic area we know in the world. But why is it really interesting? It's that um, that's still a really extreme environment to live in, but uh, we also have a really uh, high stability of the abode. abode by a bird that makes them really uh, lab laboratory closed condition to see a lot of uh, questions going from uh, uh, speciation uh, evolution to uh, more uh, applied uh, question. In the same time, it was it's also important to characterize the uh, inhabitants of this really harsh environment. So it's really hard to find a consensual uh, ecological categories, but sketch proposed. Four of them, which are quite uh, good, I would say. We have uh, for the first one, it's really for the, um, species, the species that will live only in two cave. Uh, rarely, we can normally not find them uh, outside of the caves, or at least the subterranean world. And when we can, with that out, they die. So that really uh, specifies species that we call the troglobions. Then you, we have uh, the troglophiles in two subcategories. Uh, the heterogophiles will be species that um, are from the epigen ecosystem, but that can maintain some population underground. And the subtrogophiles will be species that have at least one part of the cycle going underground. 
the last uh, category is introvoxane. This is really the species you can find only by accident in the cave. They are not relating uh, habits with cave. And of course, all the others are the epigen species. When we come back on the uh, plant purse, uh, as feeding on uh, sap, we don't expect them to find them into a cave. But uh, until today, we have uh, 70 species described in, uh, in six families. But as we saw yesterday, there's a new family who uh, present uh, species into a cave. Uh, they are feeding on, on the roots that came across the ceilings and, and walls of the caves as you can see on the right pictures, so... Uh, yep. uh, but if we focus really on plant others, we can see that it's mostly uh, two families, as with 80% of the species, uh, which represent all the species of plant others, it's the sixes and menopes. And that brings the question of if those families would have an exaptation to live on the ground, uh, even if the biology is poorly known, uh, we have a lot of observations that the larvae of them are uh, living close to the soil or in the soil and feeding on the roots. So that can be maybe one of the uh, exaptations that can lead to uh, a better evolution of the world. To explain this uh, colonization of uh, the cave by the on the birth, we have, or in animals, we have two hypotheses. The first one was proposed by Mandel in 1964, and it's called the climatic relocation hypothesis. Uh, this one states that uh, a big climatic event will drive the, spe the species to go underground, where they evolve, when the ex the, uh, rel the closest relative on the surface will uh, get, uh, get instinct because of the, the change. Um, in a phylogenetic work, we will uh, see that by um, geographical uh, isolated taxa of one lineage in the phylogeny. Two uh, good examples are uh, the Kinarid on the right side, Valsolenda uh, Fada Foresta, described two years ago, which is the only known Kinarid from continental Europe, and it was found in a cave in the south of Spain. The other uh, example is Cofamalexus Pletiri that we described uh, also two years ago, two years ago, which is the uh, only uh, it's not the only, it's the only Euclini with another species we can find. There's two Euclini in, in uh, Europe, this one and another one, which is known to have also subterranean habit, it's Tribunocranus Timerae. So those two are also isolated in Europe, would be a good example of this hypothesis. The second hypothesis was proposed in 1980 by Owens, and this one just says it's a really active process of speciation by niche uh, finding from the species. And uh, the big example is uh, the Hawaii lava uh, tube system, where uh, Fessel and Hall did a study in uh, 2013. They uh, did a molecular phylogeny where they found out that each network of lava tube present population of Olaeus polyphemus with uh, enough differences to be maybe different species. And this is congruent with uh, field observation of change in the behavior of them. Uh, they tend to have a coal, which is very specific by vibration of the roots, and each lava tube system will not have the same coal. So that's uh, the second Unfortunately, there is a problem with those two hypotheses is that one can hide the other one. If an adaptive shift happens before a climatic event, the climatic event will hide the uh, result in the phylogeny. Uh, because, uh, because of the fact that uh, all the extension uh, relative will go to extinction because of the climatic event, even if the speciation got before. To test those hypotheses, we uh, decided to uh, go to the La Réunion Island, which is an oceanic uh, island in south, uh, next to Madagascar. This island has many advantages. It's a really small one and a young one uh, dating from 2.1 million years old. She has detectable uh, lava tubes, 
from uh, 413,000 years old for the oldest to only 19 for the, for the New Year's. And especially, there is only trace species known on the island, and one is the Cape de Lumont, except really that you can see uh, on the top corner. So we decided to go there. We uh, tried to collect all the species we could. So we found uh, 11 of the 13. We did a uh, prospect so in blue caves, so mostly lava tubes, and in orange, uh, a natural ecosystem. ecosystem. We could uh, uh, extract the DNA and sequence three genes, the 18S, the CO1, in two uh, sections, and the cytochrome B on uh, 49 specimens, on which we did the phylogenetic color analysis uh, with a maximum Lahoud and uh, Bayesian inference. So, from now I will show you mostly trees, and I'm really sorry for that. <laughs> so, uh, the first year we have the results in maximum color Lahoud. Also, for both trees, we had um, really congruent results with what we know in the last letters world. With all the um, tribal lineage recover monophyletic, so you have the Euclidean one on the top, which is the Morbatal, then the Pentesterinian, then the Sixinian with the Achaemenes, and uh, the Brexinian uh, one in three blocks, uh, the Costalis plus, which is uh, two of the species, uh, in the middle one cave species from Madagascar, and then another group we call Lalute plus with uh, all the other blocks of Lavin. Uh, in the maximum Lalu, we have uh, in the Lalu with uh, different topology with Lalu with uh, coming together at the base of all the uh, Brexels group. When in the base and inference, we have the Brexel Rally at the base and then all the Brexels group uh, from there. So from those two. Uh, Two morphology, uh, topology. We uh, we can have, we have a lot of general results, and I will use uh, the, this one for all the rest of the presentation. But the results are the same for both. The first result we wanted to check if it's Brixia abrialis, so the cave species known from La Réunion is a Brixia. But when it was described, it was put in Brixia by uh, elimination. It could not be another genus and the morphology tends to be like Brixia, but it was so modified we were not sure, so the molecular, we were hoping the molecular data will answer to this question, and it does, as you can see, it's uh, going directly into the Brixia in, in the Brixia uh, need cloud. The other surprise we had, it's when we visited another cave, uh, more high in the island, it's to find specimen on roots too, unfortunately only larva, so we don't have any adults to compare. But the molecular data uh, showed us that it's a completely new species, it's really uh, molecularly different. Uh, which makes sense when we know that in between the two caves of the, the, the two species, we have the massif of one of the volcanoes of the island. Uh, one of the other reasons is about the colonization of the uh, island by the six seeds. Uh, we can see there is at least six independent colonization from uh, each of the lineage. And in Achaemenes, we have two colonization at least, and also the same in, um, in Brixia, because we have two monophyletic uh, clades with a Tetrobrixia in the middle, which is a cave species. So this one is clearly did, did not leave uh, Madagascar and stay there. Actually, it's even seven, because one of the genus of uh, La Réunion couldn't be uh, sequenced, so we still uh, need to resolve this one. It's a yes. About the taxonomic implication of this tree, uh, first, uh, with uh, pointed out the presence of new species to describe and maybe cryptic ones too. First, in the Achaemenes group, uh, where only one species is known, we found at least two more. And in the Brixia ancillaris, which is a species uh, of Brixia, we found uh, two different groupings, uh, and one of them is a population living into a cave. 
Tiflobrisa Lamogorizings was also a mystery because in all the latest um, study it was always moving in the phylogeny. Uh, so when I checked on GenBank for the data available, I saw that there was only two pieces of gene of two different specimens. So we succeeded to uh, sequence a new one for which I got all the co1, all the combi, and all the ATNS. And uh, this analysis puts it directly into the Brexini class, so that's good. Yes. And even if we look closer, it's in the middle of all the Brexia of La Reunion, so it implies two possible things. That first one, Brix, Tiflobrixia is a, actually a Brixia and not a Tiflobrixia, so we should put it into uh, the Brixia genus. Or we have different genera of uh, Brixini, which is more than possible when we know the taxonomy of this group. Uh, and we uh, have two, or not, uh, two different genera in La Réunion. What, when we look about the Cavern Coli, what we can say about this tree, uh, so it's only focusing on Brixia, because it's only Brixia that we found into cave. So we will have two major clubs of it. The first one in green, which is constituted by two species, Brixia costalis and Brixia beluensis, which are only epigen species. We never found them into a cave. They are always uh, on the trees. And in orange, the Laluiti uh, plus group, which is constituted by the two uh, cave species, Brixia reali and the new one, plus uh, Brixia laluiti and Brixia insularis, for which we found a population into caves. So what we can say about that is the second class seems to have yet to have a subtrophic habits. And we can even go further, because if we take uh, with the note before, we uh, gather with the Tiflobrixia. Tiflobrixia is also a cave uh, dwelling species in Madagascar. So we can be here in presence of a complete uh, lineage with subterranean uh, habits. But so that's really the strong results that we can point out is here is that in some succeed lineage we will have uh, uh, ancestral habits to go into caves. That's maybe due to the exaltation I was talking uh, about earlier, uh, due to the lapal state living really close to the roots or in, into the, in, in the ground. For the drivers to explain the coordination, at least in La Réunion, uh, when we look at the phylogeny, we see that uh, the, trogloc uh, the trogloglobin species both, uh, and the closest relatives at the surface are all together, so it would be more the hypothesis of all words with an uh, active speciation which occur in the inner union, giving all the species into cave and the species which are still uh, on the surface. But as I showed you also, uh, the second hypothesis is not to be uh, forgotten. Um, some uh, latest paper, uh, I don't remember the name of the author, but they uh, showed that the last glaciation event had an impact uh, 20,000 years ago on the, some uh, vegetation populations. So if there was an impact on the vegetation, we can Guess there was an impact also with the fauna associated to the specialization, and that could help also to uh, colonization of the subterranean habitat, maybe to uh, avoid some stress and, and to survive. But it's of course only hypothesis, and we need much more uh, data and continue to explore this really uh, not uh, really known. Uh, environment, so we need, of course, more data in ecology, uh, in taxonomy and molecular, we, we sh shouldn't uh, forget the citizen sciences, which are really useful to get some data. In uh, on high naturalism, there is already some cave, uh, cave well, well of project that can give us insight of what we can find. Then we need to collect, to do uh, more uh, molecular, to uh, have better uh, trees, topology, with a lot of taxa that we don't have yet in the phylogenies, and to have a better understanding of their evolution. And of course, the conservation is also really important, as uh, it's a really fragile environment, which is not really known yet. And uh, all the impact we can observe on the surface will have impact also on the run, for, 
like some uh, insect are eating on plants. So if there is an impact on the vegetation at the surface, of course, we will observe an impact on them on the ground. And of course, continue to do databasing to uh, gather all this information and go further in our study. So to leave you, I have a small movie of if it works. Of one lava I could see in south of France in a cave of six feet. No. Thank you.